Hi, everyone. I'm Gold Derby News and Features Editor Ray Richmond, and I'm here today with Makeup Department Head Elle Favorul and Hair Department Head Natalie Shea Rose on the new wrestling-themed feature from A24, The Iron Claw. Elle, let's start with you. You're tasked with creating the makeup for characters who need to look realistically sweaty and sometimes bloody. Uh, yes. What wound up being the biggest challenge for you on this film? Um, it was kind of a, a combination for us because sweat and blood were definitely the biggest component. Um, but a lot of the guys had tattoos that we had to cover. So usually with tattoo cover, I don't want to say that it's fragile, but you definitely don't want to be doing loads of high friction movement. And that's basically all we were doing. So right off the bat from our camera test, the thing we needed to find the secret recipe for was what can we cover the tattoos with that will withstand the friction, withstand real sweat, withstand fake sweat and blood and all of the other elements. So um, after a little bit of trial and error, my team and I came up with what we felt worked best and really withstood the, the length of time because they were really wrestling these matches over and over and over again. So longevity was a huge component for us. Um, and so that was kind of the battle. And then on top of it, our amazing costume designer, I think she had tallied, I was like over a hundred pieces of custom, whether it's trunks, boots, capes. So we had to make sure that whatever we were using wasn't also going to ruin the beautiful costumes that she had designed and created. Yeah, I spoke with Jen, in fact, yesterday. Yeah, yeah. So, you know, there's a, there was a lot of custom uh, pieces that went into that. And so we kind of all had to collaborate, which I think is mostly my favorite part is really working together as a team um, to kind of create that secret recipe that'll withstand because then when they really wrestle and they cut and they take a break and they're like, okay, we're going to go in for coverage. Now we are responsible for matching the real sweat that happened or vice versa. If they're going to do the coverage first, we have to anticipate the amount of sweat that they're going to have and then they have to match it. So it's, it's quite a challenge to really kind of get that perfectly balanced. And a lot of times what happens with the sweat is their bodies heat up and it as they're wrestling and the sweat dries so quick. So we were really having to find these like combinations of lotions and oils and water and tattoo cover that wouldn't break down and would last through hours and hours and hours of wrestling. They didn't teach you about sweat components or anything and make yeah. it, did they? It's like, this is glycerin. This is what you use for sweat. And then as you kind of have your life lessons on actual sets, you're like, oh, wait, there is a world of things that we could be using instead of this because glycerin is sticky and it's slippery. And a lot of people don't like it because of the way it feels uh, and it will break down tattoo cover. So it was a, a trial and error and a huge shout out to my team because we were we were literally ringside the entire time, just running in and out. Um, and I think that is definitely one of the elements that is most noticed in the trailer. Wow, oh, for sure. I'm sure audiences uh, Elle, don't think of the actor's body needing makeup, just the face and maybe the neck. I mean, usually it's covered by clothes, so not your yeah. job. But for a wrestling movie with lengthy competition scenes, oh my God, all bets are off. Yeah, and um, then add tanning and full body shaving on top of that. and <laughs> Full body shaving like every day? Yeah, I mean, I think for the guys, we probably did like every other just to help avoid any sort of issues because there was so much friction like with the skin and the mat um, that you don't want to do it every day because it can tend to make the skin sensitive. But yeah, we were... Uh, Jeremy and, and uh, Zach like to tell a story of at the camera test, Zach walked in and there are two women literally shaving Jeremy full body. And he was like, hey, I'm Zach, nice to meet you. <laughs> <laughs> That's great. Uh, yeah. Natalie, I haven't forgotten about you. Um, talk about what inspired the wigs and hair pieces for the main characters, if you would. Were you trying to match old photographs of the Von Erichs? Yeah, uh, yeah, we 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 wanted to match the Von Erics as much as possible. We, uh, like my biggest goal and Sean's was to like get everybody as close to the actual characters as possible while still like looking good themselves, like not going so far that it was like, okay, they're wearing a wig, you know, like we pushed it a little too far. You can tell they're trying too hard. You know what I mean? <laughs> although, although you know, when you 
I, I remember watching wrestling when I was a, a kid in the 60s and 70s, and it looked like they were wearing wigs even then. Even yeah. the real characters looked like they were wearing wigs. Surprisingly, most of them weren't. <laughs> they just had really bad hair like that. <laughs> yeah, I think that's it. Well, that, was, was... Like, that was like kind of part of my struggle. I was like, is it bad or right? No, but it looks right because they had bad hair. Like, stop it. You're fine. <laughs> bad hair, but but really uh, like the long blonde locks and all that. Um, oh, yeah. Similar to what uh, what Jeremy has on the bear, I think, you know, <laughs> in terms yeah. of bad, bad hair seems to be part part of his deal. Um, <laughs> oh, yeah. um, what was the biggest challenge for you uh, in creating the hair for the wrestlers? I mean, both of uh, Von Erics and their rivals, they certainly have a lot of it, as we just said. Oh, my gosh. Oh, yeah. Well, I mean, it was just trying to make sure everything looked good because um, it was constantly every single wig was constantly in motion. And there were several days that we had like nine wigs working all at once. And they were all shooting for like 10 minutes at a time. So it was just chasing all of that around. <laughs> Does anybody use their real hair on these kind of shoots or is it it's all it's always wigs and hair pieces? It has oh, no, they, they, we try to use their real hair as much as possible because it's always going to look more natural. As, so as often as possible, you want to use their real hair. But like depending on like if they have different shoots or if their hair is too short, then we have to do like we have to get a wig just to achieve what we need. Did they did they grow their hair longer? Uh, on uh, yeah, they the all grew their hair out some, but um, I guess like from when they were shooting, they didn't have like long enough for them to grow their hair enough to match. Like that, and that was the thing, even with Jeremy, like we added extensions because he'd grown it out, but he was like a couple inches short. So we just added some uh, like keratin, like bonded extensions. That way they were like bonded, like very tightly around each little, uh, like two or three hairs so that when he moved, you had no idea. Like you never saw any line. Cause I was like, it's going to blow up. <laughs> for sure. <laughs> Natalie, you also had this whole other assignment with the wedding scene. Uh, I imagine that was like having a whole different set of characters create the hair for, particularly Lily James. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. L Lily was such a blast to work with, though. Like, she's just beautiful and so much fun. And she really, like, took the character, ever, like, wherever it needed to go. Like, she, she didn't want... She was very into the character as far as like not having something that was so fancy and so done up just because she wanted it to be pretty. It was like she's stuck with like, I want it to be small town, country, like that's not who she is, you know. So I wanted to design something that was something like maybe her mom or her sister probably did her hair for her. And then all the wrestlers had different hair at the wedding too, right? You know, oh, they were yeah. Try, trying to clean up and look their best. Yeah, <laughs> they, they were a little more styled than they ever are in the rest of the movie. <laughs> Um, how did you set out to age Willie L? L? Uh, is it all about just applying more blush and eyeshadow, or is it a little bit more complex than that? Well, it's it's simple yet complex because we actually, instead of adding more makeup, we opted to do less makeup on Lily, which I love when an actor is happy to go wherever the character needs to go, even if that's an uncomfortable space for them. Because for a lot of actors walking into our trailer, we are the safe space. We help them create the characters. And so uh, like, for example, the wedding, we did a mood board. Once I saw Jen's designs for the dress, you know, Natalie and I spoke about the hair and then I came up with a mood board for her makeup. And then we kind of found uh, a space that we thought, okay, this fits Pam. And then from there, you realize she's becoming more centered around her kid. She has a job and a full-time job at that, as well as taking care of her entire family and dealing with everything that Kevin is going through. So uh, makeup is not her priority. So we actually decided to do less makeup, but then do little aging accents like we drew in because she's flawless and beautiful um, in person. And so we thought, okay, let's add a little, you know, uh, wrinkling in the forehead. Let's do some 11 lines. Let's, you know, accent some lines around the eyes um, and really helping to change the shape of her face a little by changing the tones instead of her younger look where she's wearing peaches and pinks to really like liven her up we kind of went more in like the warm like brown tone so she still had a little life to her face but not enough where you're like oh this is a young you know a young girl thriving in her life this is a woman who has now aged and been through some stuff mm -hmm. um so for us it was really about the color saturation and changing that and then adding uh slight hints of of aging for her to to really sell that that progression of time what did you use for blood 
on the rest was L. I, I'm assuming that was mostly your job. Yes, it was. Uh, whenever it was on the hair, Natalie and I were working together on that. Um, but we actually there the process for blood when it's in action is a little bit different. There are so many different types of blood, flow blood, drying blood, aged blood, and then the color variations. So um, our DP who is so, so talented and, and so amazing to work with at the camera test, the first thing I did was take out every single thing that I had and we swatched it on camera to be like, okay, this is the color range we wanna be in what can we do from here? So once we kind of found the color range, it's a lot of layering. So it's like alcohol colors, which are uh, alcohol activated makeups that, that don't budge. Those go down first in the sort of pattern that you want them. Then you do what's called a drying blood, which looks wet, but stays dry and doesn't move. And then the flow blood goes on top of that. So there's actual movement in the scene and it helps with continuity because the flow blood and the actual, actual colors are there and help with movement, but you've got the alcohol and the drying blood to keep with continuity so they don't actually move from like at least their start point. So um, it's a lot of resets, but the boys were such troopers about like, yeah, I don't care if it gets in my eyes. <laughs> it was just like whatever needed to happen, whatever happened in that ring was completely out of our hands. We set the blood and then sent them on their way. Who knew there were so many different kinds of blood? Uh, I guess you <laughs> having the makeup yeah. template. Um, uh, I, I suppose um, you had a truckload of uh, YouTube videos and photos online of the real Von Erichs to draw your inspiration from, Natalie. Uh, oh, how absolutely. much did all of that help? Oh, oh I, I like poured over everything. Like, I think the the best one for me was probably um, the Dark Side of the Ring episode because it really like locked you into who they all were versus just looking at a photo and just trying to base that. Like, because you want to know what like, the actors going through, the characters going through, and the real person went through. So you can kind of combine and find a look for all of that because it's that's as much a part of it as making them just like match a photo. You know, <laughs> that was uh, that was the Vice documentary, right? Yeah, yeah. And what other materials did you use for uh, for either of you for ideas and inspiration for doing the makeup in here or the characters outside the ring? You know, to depict the '80s era, like magazines, catalogs, movies, TV shows, all that. Well, it's funny. I mean, Natalie and I collaborated on a lot of things, but when I coming out from LA to shoot in Baton Rouge, uh, Jen, our costume designer, was kind of the first person who had boots on the ground. And so as I'm kind of getting a lay of the land, when I first got there, I mean, she had magazines and books, uh, stacks and stacks. And it was just me by myself. My team hadn't come in from New Orleans yet. And so I'm just pouring over. I still have albums on my phone of just pictures from those books, just to really get a sense of the specific region in Texas. Because as Natalie will tell you, Dallas and Houston are very different. You know, it's like upstate New York and New York City. It's very <laughs> different vibes. So you want to make sure that you're getting those subtle hints and so I used as much of like the library and the books that you know Jen had plus my own research and then once I met up with Natalie we kind of collaborated on the actual Texas references. Yeah I'm actually from Houston Texas uh, originally so <laughs> I was very familiar like we went to Dallas all the time Our, uh, we had a ranch that was halfway in between Houston and Dallas so I used to go back and forth between Houston and Dallas my whole life growing up so I was like familiar with it just from actually living it. <laughs> I lived out in the middle of the country. Wow. In Texas. <laughs> with that whole Texas Americana thing. I mean, it, it's very big and it, it was such oh. a distinct, such a distinct time in it. the eighties to be able to depict. Oh yeah. And, and the eighties is such an iconic decade that you have to be careful because it's very, especially with hair and makeup, it's very easy to go Madonna. It's very easy to go music video, rock star. And so having to like kind of scale back, like, oh, I can't take this too far, you know, because you want it to be a recognizable um, piece, like for makeup, the blush, the tones, like you want it to be recognizable, but you also have to be realistic about where these people are living. Oh, and, absolutely. And, yeah, no, no. Yeah, go ahead, Natalie. Oh, I was gonna say, yeah, where they're living and just like who they like, same thing, like who they really were. Like those guys like never like did their hair. So if their hair would have been done, it would have looked weird, you know? <laughs> and like, and they had such a huge fan base that it's like, you can't change that too much. Cause like they have like, th they're heroes to all these people, you know? <laughs> so. And they still are, I guess, but boy, what a tragic, horrible oh, story yeah. that ultimately befell that. When I read about it before seeing the movie, I was just like, oh my God. 
this is why this is why the Kennedys times five, you know, in yeah. terms of tragedy. Um, but um, L, uh, for Fritz von Erich, uh, who who did not meet a bad end, who just who lived out his life, uh, <laughs> especially when he grew older. How, how did you depict that? Maybe also his alcoholism. Did you have to like put more red on his nose? Yeah, absolutely. So it's, uh, there was a scene that actually didn't make it into the final cut, which, you know, is totally fine. But Fritz is, Holt is very much, he sucks you into his character. He is Holt and you want to create Fritz for him. Like Holt became Fritz through and through and you got so jazzed about his progression you wanted to do whatever it took so we actually had a scene that he was in full old age makeup but to take it back before that bit happened um you kind of have to find the subtleties so he's working outside in the sun he is an alcoholic what are the things that are going to happen to him naturally that don't require a prosthetic or tons of time and so we you know, he has a, a a beautiful, you know, on the fairer side skin tone. So you really have to pop out the reds around the nose, the cheeks, the forehead area. You find little subtleties to put in like blue veining because a lot of that, those like subtle things as you age and then picking out spots for, for um, you know, either freckles, age spots, sunspots, things like that uh, to tell so many parts of a story, you know, because he really, he was this, massive head of this household but had so much else going on that his appearance out of any of the guys was the last thing he thought about and so he definitely wasn't wearing sunscreen he wasn't caring about his skin in terms of you know the drinking and so we kind of just said what's as far as we can take it without it being distracting so I think we kind of found that level of subtleties with the broken capillaries and the veining and the sunspots and, and things like that. And that little bit of burning around the forehead that takes it far enough without people looking at it and, and focusing in on the makeup. They're really watching him as a person. This is why you're such an artist. My God, you're talking about broken capillaries and veining. And you really have to know about the subtleties of, of you know, of human beings and their their physical deterioration and change. Oh, the things that I've had to look up on the internet. Yeah, <laughs> I can't even imagine. I, wow, I mean, this is it's it, that's the thing for both of you, El and Natalie. It's such a research project. You know, uh, people people think, oh yeah, you know, they do their hair. Oh yeah, they put on a little makeup. No, no, you guys are you guys are researchers in your own right. Both of you, you have to be uh, in order Absolutely. to get everything correct. Oh, absolutely. It's like kind of one of my favorite parts of the job, though. <laughs> Mine as well. Yeah. <laughs> I love it. Because you want to do the story justice, but you never want someone to look at it and get taken out of it. This story was so important for us to be able to tell. We wanted to assist Sean and the actors in telling this story, not overtake the characters. Were you able to ever to meet... Uh... Uh, Kevin Von Erich after the fact or or during during the filming we, what was we that met part him of we met him in Dallas at the actual premiere um I, I think because Sean has been I mean and he'll he'll say this he's been a fan of wrestling since he was nine years old and so our biggest resource was Sean Sean was an encyclopedia for us for everything we needed he knew what photos he wanted to reference what time periods he wanted to hit the emotions and what that looked like in terms of hair and makeup and so we you know we didn't really contact the family um because sean was such a resource and then once we were linked up with the actors the actors were like this is fantastic i'm gonna add my knowledge into this and then boom the characters were created we kind of really just had uh quite the resource right in front of us which was amazing i was gonna say boy you had the right guy in charge <laughs> absolutely yeah. you had a living a living historian right there yeah um, <laughs> well um we're actually going to have to end things there um uh the iron claw will be released in theaters on december 22nd uh l favorable and uh natalie shea rose best of luck to you both this award season. Thank you so uh, much. And thanks for joining us today at Gold Derby. Mm -hmm.